Hey, what's up, you guys? <coughs> it's, a... <coughs> it's me. <coughs> my... <coughs> <coughs> and welcome back to another video. We're gonna continue with this shit. I don't know what it is, but I'm really loving this game, even though it is really creepy. And there's something about it that just makes me wanna just jump and get scared. I don't know what it is. If it's a if it's a woman face or whatever and this is actually a cell phone game you can literally play this game on your phone and the graphics is like it's not like like playstation or computer quality but it is really good for a cell phone game i'm like blown away about this Jesus. but for some reason that woman just gives me such jump scares and i played layers of fear and that was scary but this, for some reason, is just even more scarier. I don't know what it is. Anyways, without further ado, the later part... I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> with Gat for Macy. See you guys at the end of the video. Almost ruined my voice there, Jesus. <laughs> Trying to shout so loud. Okay, where we left off. We're still at the house with Hannah. Hopefully I won't have any other unfortunate slips us with someone who isn't bound by confidentiality. Okay. The mansion grounds has been one of the first things to be fixed up aside from the bedroom. Although it's still a work in progress, it had a promising start and I can already see the flower patches. Luke's favorite defodils stands out easily, having been transplanted from the pots that used to litter the rooftop of our penthouse. How big was your rooftop? Seriously? Why, if the moving crew thought that Luke was being hard on them, they clearly didn't see the landscape on his way out. The man looked like he was ready to faint, and Luke seemed ready to kill him by the end of their discussion. It is in the gardens that I see him standing near the flowers in quiet admiration. Hey! It's our guy! It's our movie maker! How are you doing, bruh? Are you chilled? Are you relaxed? Remember the last session they had with each other, Luke and, 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 and... God, I forgot his name already. Well, it's been a while since I played this game. Yo, I hope you're doing okay, bruh. Okay, stay strong, okay? Just, just relax. He's hard to miss. The hulk of a man that clearly did not belong. And the big pack, pack, backpack and suitcase he has with him makes him look much larger. It is a peculiar sight seeing someone who looks like he does handling little, delicate things with such care. He looks up from the gardens and does a double take before a friendly face replaces his serene expression. Miss Wright, yeah? Hi, uh, Zachary Steele here oh, from Zach Luxury Living Man. Zachary! Now I remember. <laughs> Hope you weren't waiting too long. But it looks like you're still moving in, huh? Thought for a second there my calendar was wrong and I came here too early. You look... Familiar? Have we met? I have a very wide social circle, so everyone looks familiar at one point or another. But one would think I'd remember someone who stands out like him. The struggle to recall must have been evident on my face as he quickly and kindly answers my question. Oh, I was with Isabella, your estate agent. Isabella! Where she had the house blessed? I missed her. Where is she? She's probably slumped somewhere in depression and decay. Hi, Isabella. Stay strong. Stay strong. Oh, yes, that's right. Now you remember. Jeez. Your husband insulted him. Like a bastard. Small world, isn't it? Oh, yes, yeah, very small. I should have known you were Ms. Wright. The one and only. Welcome, welcome to Maison de Wright. And yes, we've been in the process of moving in as we were delayed. But it won't be a problem. They're just adding a few things here and there, and you should still be able to do your work. Where's the rest of your crew then, Mr. Steele? Zack is fine, please. Mr. Steele makes me feel like I'm a mascot for a cleaning product. Anyway, I'll be your one-man crew for today. Don't worry, been doing this gig for a while now. You must be quite the veteran to handle this on your own. We've had a full crew coming into our penthouse the last time we were covered in your magazine. Veteran? Oh, you, your words are too kind, Miss Wright. Hana! Look at him blushing. He likes her. If I get to call you Zack, you have my permission to call me Hana. Hana, not Hannah. Why is it Hana? 
Do I see a double A there? No, I don't. You're not a double A battery or triple A battery, okay? You're a HANA, not HANA. Stop making it sound more expensive than you already are, okay? I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't like her. I, I just, it's the attitude and the, the just the, 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 the uh, you know what I mean. Jeez, let's just continue. Alrighty then. Alrighty then. See, I like Zach. Zach's a, Zach's a cool guy. He's a, he's a, he's a down to earth guy. You know, I like down to earth people. You know, I like the the people that are down in the earth and dirt and just down and. Let's move on. Anyway, I'm no veteran, but I know my camera well enough to make sure this is a good shoot. You can trust me on that, Miss Rack. Hannah. It's Hannah. God, boy. Don't indulge in it, okay? It's Hannah. Zachary proves quickly enough that I can in fact trust him. His skills with the camera and experience in this industry at the very least. He is kind and courteous, listening and following as I lead him around the house. A really nice fellow and he treats our household staff well whenever we cross paths with him. I answer his questions to the best of my ability and he is patient enough to answer mine whenever I get curious enough. For one, I ask what the bag bags are for. They are quite the magician's toolkit. From inside he had procured several items to embellish the interior with. Bowls of fruit, lemons, trays with pepper moles, stacks of cookbooks, cutting boards and glass canisters filled with colourful nuts and grains are brought in for a kitchen setting. For the bathroom, there are white towels, seashells and decorative soaps. There are other things as well, too numerous to count. All that large backpack and suitcase. Next to the tray, softens up a room, makes a place feel more homey and fills it up with texture. But you guys probably have better stuff I can use for this. No lights? Don't tell me all these are just props. Well, I've got my tripod here. For things like these, natural light is best. I'll just have to set the shutter speed to a real slow setting, and as long as nobody steps into the shot, it'll look great. Oh, it better. We go through the rooms one at a time, although we first tackle the ones that the movers have no business in anymore. Oh god. Are we going through all the rooms? Like, every single one? Including the one where Isabella found the letter. Oh god, I'm dreading it already. The ballroom needs little preparation which with its grand design. Jeez, it's quite grand. Although there is some trouble at first with the wide open space and the pictures being backlit. It is in the kitchen that Zachary's props come in handy, considering how Johannes Huns Johannes Which one is it? Johannes or Johannes? Kept the place so neat and sterile. One can practically eat off the floor. I wouldn't. I mean, I, I get your description. We carry on touring the house and taking pictures where we can, with exception to the rooms which have yet to gain any purpose or design. Too bad I can't take a sneak peek at his photos yet. Funny enough, he is using a traditional camera. I didn't even know film still existed. With the way he speaks, however, I can see that he knows enough about his craft that I'm not too worried about botched photographs. I imagine photography must be cath cathartic for him. Okay, okay, cathartic. Judging by how at ease he looks while taking pictures. There are small snippets of conversation in between the clicking of the camera. He even goes far as to talk about these terminologies like shutter speeds and aperture when I ask about the technical aspects. I can't quite see the pictures as it is made, much like when I watch art artists paint on their canvas. But just watching someone passionately practicing their craft such as this is exciting on its own, in its own way. Going through the many rooms has been quite the exercise for the both of us. Despite that, he has been so nice and I find myself putting on my best smile. Aww, she likes him. But it is as we're taking pictures in the foyer that everything comes to a standstill for a moment. Just a moment. And have I not been paying attention, I wouldn't have even noticed. It is merely a split second when Zachary's rhythm is put to a halt. Oh shit. His finger doesn't move to release the shutter. 
Yet he also doesn't pull the camera away from his face. Gaze still firmly fixed through the viewfinder. His hands shake and there is a light sheen of sweat on his forehead. Zachary? No response. Zach? Is something the matter? She can't feel anything. Lowering his camera, he blinks and stares at something behind me before shaking his head. Turning around though, I see nothing that could have gotten his attention. Oh, oh no, no, there, there, there's nothing wrong. I, I just remembered something I saw. Uh, let's get back to the pictures. Can you move a bit more to the left, yeah? Oh my word, he's one of the people that saw the letter. That's the whole thing is uh, the people that see the letter are the ones being haunted. And she and her husband saw the letter as well. Oh, this is riveting, man. So like story mode. I love it. I struggle to respond this time. There's a sudden weight on my back and an indescribable tightness around my throat. Yeah, because her hand was on your throat. Hello. Everything stops. And everything starts again as I manage to choke out. If you're sure. I don't know what just happened. It, it was probably just a dizzy spell. I'm fine. And he said he's fine. We continue at the same pace as before, although there is an unspoken agreement that we will not talk about what happened. So, is this a full-time job for you then? Jesus! Jesus! This! Ah, was riveting! Chilling! I've had a bit of a jump scare, but I'm more, like, stronger now, you know? It's a, uh, I'm remembering my time with Layers of Fear and it's just making me- Come on! Don't get scared of this cell phone game! Come on! Get it together! Get it together! Nah, I just freelance mostly for magazines, newspapers, and events. So you can't really call it a full-time job. It's fun and it puts food on the table, but it's not what I really want to do. At least, not all the time. What is it that you want to do then? Oh, she's enjoying this conversation. You know, it's much better than uh, Mary Ann's mm, yes, you yeah, no, mm, yes, no, no. He actually wants to have a conversation. And she loves that. Maybe I've been out of line sticking my nose into other people's business. Mm, you know, you've done that a few times. But I can't help but ask. I regret doing so as I see his shoulders slump and the easygoing air he has fades away. He looks torn over whether he wants to talk about it or not. Films. Documentaries, mostly. But cinematography is a lot more difficult than photography, right? I was working on this thing, actually. What thing? Well, it wasn't really a big thing. People didn't like Blue Fancy very much. People don't like a film about colors. I suppose they would have liked Blue Bibby a lot more. Very funny. So, Grand Director. Do you want to tell me what Blue Fonsi is all about? He hesitates. But when I refuse to budge on the matter, he gives in and spills it all out. Blue Fonsi, le hair la plus sombre des nos bretanquis. Yo! It's been a long time since I've read French. The dark blue. They're, they're giving English for those who don't understand French. I understand! Not everyone can understand or speak French. Okay? Nothing to be ashamed of. Dark blue, the darkest hours of the black British. He speaks with passion of one who has gone through the very matter he is concerned with. There is conviction, knowledge and experience in his speech. Why, I would have told him that he is an amazing speaker if only I wasn't so engrossed listening. Prejudice and discrimination in schools and in the workplace Lesser chances for opportunity and higher chances of being treated like a criminal. He spoke of blacks and people of color in general, still being treated like second-class citizens, all because of the color of their skin. It is all just positively riveting and sad. Yeah, sad indeed. Sad. Now, a lot of people actually don't understand how bad it can really be. I mean, I'm from South Africa and... I was born here and I've lived here all my life and I've never seen the outside world I've never even gone to America or Scotland or even England and I'm part English 
so I don't even know. I've only known South Africa and at times here it gets a little too heated and sometimes you just gotta just say to yourself I honestly don't understand how you feel and that's okay you know because you're not in their shoes and you don't understand and I and I, I love that they've put this in the game it's so different it's so like raw and truthful you know and it's it's just like it's blowing me away it's, it's just it's just comes to a point wherein he soon loses steam he looks abashed, realizing what he had just done. Sorry, I just got so carried away and... It's fine. It is really so fascinating to watch people talk about their passion, after all. You should see how your eyes light up when you speak so fiercely. You do have very beautiful eyes. Okay, hello, hello, hello. Ooh, okay, I knew I found something in the waters there. What did I say? I've got a knack for this! I saw it from a mile away, man. Uh-huh. Thanks, I guess. Sure. I want to say that I understand where he's coming from. But I really don't, do I? Exactly! Exactly what I was just saying now. You don't understand. I don't understand. You don't understand. Only, the only person who can understand is the person being hurt. Like, sometimes... Sometimes it frustrates me when people come to me and say I know what you're going through I'm sorry and then you're standing there thinking do you really know what I'm going through because I think the only one that knows who I'm going through is myself and how can I express and describe how I'm really feeling you know words the words don't just come they don't just spill out of your mouth so easily it's so hard and that's the one thing that people just need to understand is sometimes you don't know what they're going through and yes the niceties and, and the society says someone's going through a hard time the words that you're supposed to say every time is I'm sorry I know what you're going through and sometimes it's just better to just just say I'm sorry and just leave it at that because maybe you really don't know what they're going through. I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth and I've lived a charmed life. It hasn't been perfect but the difficulties I've been through pales in comparison to what others experience on a daily basis. I certainly don't know how I would have fared were it any different. Would I still have met Luke? Or would he still have loved me if I was any lesser? That is the question though. I mean, if you are surrounded by money and fame, it's a facade. You know, facade, like make-believe, like it's a mask. And if you don't have that money surrounding you, would those people really want to be your friend or be around you or share in your company or, or have a conversation with you, you know? That makes you think. That makes you think. Would you discard possessions and money for happiness? Would you? That is the question. What was your home like? Yeah. See, Hannah's <coughs> Hannah is uh, trying to um, deter away from the conversation. These things you talk about, it sounds like you've... Well, I don't mean to pry, I mean. Hmm? live with my older sister and my grandparents. We had a shop selling all sorts of things below our pop... Sorry, flat. Flat. And well, I was one of the few non-white, non-British students in class. I didn't get pushed around or anything straight up. Even then, I was one of the biggest kids around. Not easy. But a pencil and notebook would go missing, you know? Oh, that I knew. Children can be so cruel at times. Of course, it may be a slightly different story when you have personal guards and the stolen item is not a pencil, but an expensive heirloom. Yo, she's like totally rich compared to him. So what about you? How are you liking your new house? It's pretty impressive. It's so interesting to see them having a conversation. It's like, don't get me wrong, it's like the rich versus the poor middle class. 
And the thing that I like about this is that she genuinely wants to know like what kind of person he is in his life and stuff. She's not like a total stuck up bitch, you know? And that's what I like about this. It's like her husband is more of the stuck up one than she is. And I'm kind of liking her in a way, you know? It's nice, I suppose. You suppose? Not big enough? What? No, oh, don't be a bully. It's just that. I understand if you don't want to talk about it. I was a little girl, all dolled up and treated like a fragile porcelain, with nursemaids waiting to me hand and foot. All the material possessions anyone could ever want, I could ask for on a whim, and it would be handed to me just like that. But I barely saw my parents just goodbye kisses in the morning before they went off to who knows where they were needed to next. I saw them more often on the telly or in the papers than I ever did in person. I remember my old house. It was a lot like this one. Big walls and big halls, but nobody in it. Not really. I think I'm making the connection here. I really am. That's why she craves socializing. Because of what happened to her as a kid. Because her parents were never there. She lacks like companionship and just like having a normal conversation with someone I'm getting it now yo she's actually a really nice character it makes you think how alone you are yeah yeah I get that I get that a pensive mood overcomes us and there's a moment where neither of us are sure of how to go on from there things have gotten a bit too personal Yet it isn't wholly uncomfortable, like as if we've been friends before. Well, that's normal, ain't it? You just moved here. He's just such a, he's just such a normal person, like a, like a warm person to have a conversation with. I think that's what it is. She just can be herself with him, you know, and just to talk. And that's that down-to-earth personality that I really love. It's just to talk to someone. It's so awkward when you're trying to talk to someone. And they're just like so unresponsive on the other end, you know? And that, I, I just love that character. You'll make home out of it yet. It certainly makes it easy to believe that. My childhood house is indeed a lot like this one. Hey, maybe that's why she's buying this house. It's like a childhood memory that she wants to revisit or something, some psychological thing. Just as large and extravagant, and just as empty. I hope he's right. So, Monsieur Le Photograph, you've covered the one and only Ermengard Mansion. I know that hallway. Don't tell me we're going to go into that room. What's next on the agenda? Uh-uh. The interview? Oh, thank God. Boring. It's an interior design and housing magazine. And they want to know what Miss Wright has to say about her interior design and house. Honor Wright thinks she bought a magnificent house that she can certainly brag about. Blah, blah. Boring. You know what they should print more of? I watched an interesting documentary the other day. Blue Fonsi, The Darkest Hours of the Black British. I recommend you watch it. Yo, that's nice of her, yo. That's nice of her. Jeez, yo. Nice, Hannah. Those are the things that people should know about. What do they care if I use a purple or green bowl of fruit in my kitchen? People, right? We, oui. People are shite. Yes! Yes! Yes, yes! Good, Anna. good. Yo! <laughs> I'm feeling the British out of you now. <laughs> what do you think? Do I look good with this angle? I strike a pose while he's being busy, looking taken aback for a moment. Probably not expecting me to just go and say such a cross word. But he recovers quickly, and after snapping a few shots, he grins. Yeah, vous êtes belle. You want copies of these ones? Yes, please. So, the big boy knows French. There's <sighs> a lot about him you don't know. <laughs> you must have wooed a few ladies. Unless you're into gents. Oh, is she flirting with him? Wow, my cheeks are blushing, yo. 
Either way, French is, after all, the language of romance. Oh, of course it is. Of course it is. <laughs> no, I don't know about quoting fancy poetry, but I've made lunch for a girl before, and they did like that fancy French cuisine. Can you cook your best? I can cook just about anything as long as I know the recipe. Say money peak. Do you feel that? Do you feel that? Do you feel that? I feel that. <laughs> it has been too long since I've had a nice and proper chat with a good friend. No, Lee's certainly not a good friend. And although we're ju we've just met, Zachary is a sort who can probably befriend anyone. He's just a comfortable person to be around with. A bit too comfortable. Mm -hmm. Do you feel the fires burning there, Hannah? The photo shoot went by a breeze and somewhere along the way as we talk and laugh I find myself getting a bit too close without realizing. He'll give me this strange look until I back off and he'll go back to asking questions after I agree to do his little interview and it's just odd. Well no, me being friendly isn't that odd, that is how I am. Zach, Zachary is the one that's being odd. Why? Anyone else would absolutely welcome the extra attention I give them. He, on the other hand, looks almost flustered about it. He should be used to different personalities by now, having to deal with various people when he works. And if not, he needs to start. Perhaps nobody has shown him attention of this kind, but he's a big boy. He should be able to handle me. All it was, all it is, is a friendly touch here, or a pretty smile there, and gentle swaying of the hips as I move around. <laughs> God, my word. No, come on, this is a horror game. Let's keep it PG. I mean, like, like horror PG, <laughs> if there is such a thing. Zachary grew and grew more red every time he noticed. Am I being mean as I find enjoyment in seeing him unravel? Perhaps. This went on during the interview and beyond that. There's nothing wrong with what we're doing, right? What are they doing right now? <laughs> uh, I don't know if they're still walking and chatting or if they're doing something else right now. <laughs> Zachary and I are just having a playful, friendly chat while enjoying the outside view. At least that's how I see it. I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm really getting distracted. Could you maybe stop doing that? Stop? I'm not sure if I want to, though. Okay, stop it or continue teasing. Let's continue teasing. Oh! I'm sorry, I'm sorry, he's such a good guy, and I love his character, and I love her character, but I just want to see how far this is going to get, okay? Let's continue teasing. This is who I am, and I'm not going to tone myself down for somebody else. I have no obligation to do so. At any rate, he is rather cute, and it is a bit fun seeing him squirm. What's the worst that can happen? Just of this. <laughs> I doubt it will be anything bad considering how much of a gentleman he is. Oh, stop doing what, Zach, sweetie? <laughs> Touching my arm and looking at me like that. Like what? <laughs> I pause, giving him a baffled look. This has baffled me. <laughs> this is certainly the first time a man has ever complained about me being too friendly. I'm not doing anything wrong. Come on now, don't be like that. It's just a bit of fun. Bit of harmless fun. I'm sorry, it's just really uncomfortable and, and... And I don't think either of us want Mr. Wright to see us and think there's any funny business. I'm sorry. Look, can we just... We're finished with the interview already, aren't we? Uh, maybe it's about time I go. Oh, you must be joking. No, no, I'm not. You're certainly the odd one. Don't be such a killjoy. A little bit of flirting never hurt anyone. Other men would simply be delighted by my interest in them. Besides, you really are such a cutie. Okay, Hannah, you're going you're going too far, okay? You like there's a there's a point where it's funny and there's a point where you just like making that person uncomfortable and that's what you're doing. God, I'm regretting my choice now. Fuck. I thought she was gonna be like all polite about it. Well, I'm not them, Hannah. Oh, he's angry now. So, yeah, I'm probably odd. I don't understand you. Let me put it this way. You're a pretty lady, so this must have happened to you at least once or twice. How would you feel if someone was making you uncomfortable? 
only for them to refuse when you ask them to stop and they make you out to be the one that's wrong? Mm. This isn't... This isn't the same as that! As I try to argue his point, he starts to pack the rest of his bags. This is preposterous! My main argument is, what sort of man complains about a beautiful woman being friendly with them? It seems logical in my head, but the moment I try to say it, it starts to fall apart. Yes it is! Unwanted advances don't make me feel macho or anything like that. I'm not here to argue morals or ethics, Miss Wright. I think I have more than enough for the interview if that's fine with you. I may be starting to overstay my welcome. I feel deflated. And things were going so smoothly too. I ended up pushing too hard just when I might have found myself a good friend. I'm not sure if I feel awful because I'm not getting what I want or because I'm just compared to the pigs I so despise. Damn, I thought he was gonna go for it, man. Zach, come on. Have you got a girlfriend or something? You might have hinted at that one. You're not even going to let me apologize. You're not a bad person, Hannah. Just... Because I really am sorry. People won't always be how you want them to be. And apology accepted. But I really do need to go. A friend of mine is expecting me. It's getting late. Will you visit again? I will be asking for copies of those photographs. Yeah, sure. I'll make you a copy. That will be much appreciated. I'll ask Johans to see you out. I feel sick to my stomach as I watch Zachary leave. No, Zach! Please! I need you in my life. You're the happiness I thought I never had. It is silly to be upset over falling out with a man who was, only a few hours ago, a complete stranger to me. That doesn't excuse my boorish behavior at all, and it doesn't make the ill feeling any better. I think about, I stare off into space, unsure of how I feel. And I stay a good while, just standing there, until the sun sets in the horizon. Disheartened, I proceed back into the mansion for supper. Oh, it's dark. Are we eating in the mansion? Oh, it's gonna start off. Come on, man, come on. Layers of fear, layers of fear, layers of fear, layers of fear. <sighs> I could do this. <clears throat> Entering the dining hall causes me so much confusion. It is dark. For a moment, I thought the electric work is not up to par. But that clearly is not the case as every other room is bright with artificial light. Finding the light switch is a monumental task considering the size and my unfamiliarity with the room. To make matters worse, the darkness grants the room a different atmosphere, airy and frightening. It takes longer than I thought to find the switch, something that will have to be rectified later on. My skin starts to prickle and there is the distinct feeling of being watched. It unsettles me and only spurs me on in my search. And when I do open the lights, there is a hiss. I'll turn the lights down, woman! Oh, I thought you were the ghost! Shit! And you're drinking again. Bastard. There, at the end of the hall, is my beloved husband with his face in one hand and a glass in the other. Perhaps I can let it go if it's only one glass of wine. And green wine, what the fuck? However, I can feel myself go livid after seeing the toxic green liquid gleam mockingly at me. Why is it green? Luke, what? Are you drinking absinthe? Absinthe? A whole glass of absinthe? Are you mad? Are you mad, ma'am? You know what the doctor said. Absinthe, Luke. Are you actively trying to kill yourself? Because if you are, we can just hit you with a bloody car! Honeybee, buttercup, not too loud, please. Besides, it's Lelouch, not too strong. Just hair of the dog that bit me. Helps with the hangover, dearest. You drank? When? This morning, love. Don't be mad. I just needed a few drinks, having to deal with those simpletons. And maybe I had one too much. You don't see me whinging about you leaving me to handle them on my own. If you only knew what I was up to. I had to attend the photo shoot and interview with Luxury Living. You know that. <sighs> Let's not make this about me, Luke. This is about you and your drinking problem and... Oh, I don't know, Hana, darling. 
What if my drinking problem, as you like to call it, is linked to you? Come again? If we think about it that way, this discussion is about you. That was pretty mean of you, leaving me alone to do all the work like that. Oh, I'm so sorry that you have to get your hands dirty. You can't use the interview as an excuse either, honey. That... I don't have the words for you. I don't. Luckily, we bought a mansion so I can be in the far room. I was informed the moment your little interview was done. So, what was it then, hmm? What were you doing? I was with Zachary. I was sitting in the garden. Do we stoke the fire? Hmm? Or do we just throw a glass of water on it? I'll just throw a glass of water. I was just tending to the garden, sweetie. You were? For a moment he looks skeptical. I can tell by the gleam in his eyes and the way he sits up in, in attention. He thinks I'm lying. But I see no point in bringing up Zachary and aggravating him. I did tend to the gardens for a bit, so it's not a complete lie. Just a little white lie. Besides, I know just how to please him. Sauntering over and circling around him, I place my fingers on his shoulders. <sighs> Okie dokie. Mm -hmm. I had to make sure they didn't ruin your favorite daffodils. Oh, that is wonderful. I'm not sure if he means the massage or the flowers, but I'll take it. <laughs> this is better than a fight. So, absinthe. Just one glass, mm, loose. Uh, I suppose I can let this one go. A bit too late anyway, you've already drank half How can you let absinthe thing. go? It's like a no-go drink. Jeez. But remember your doctor's orders. Yes, yes, I'll try to drink less. Try. Hey, well, I'm do. only human. And I'm also human. You don't see me drinking at the crack of dawn. Do you want one? Well, I won't say no. That's what you're saying. No, thank you. No, come on. Don't be a stick in the mud. Supper is spent in silence with nothing but the occasional sound of silverware. A grand, fe a grand feast has been served while well grander than usual anyway, most likely due to Luke's complaints of stress. Yo, we got some fish growing and some oysters. Planning on getting lucky tonight. To finish it all off, black tea and golden syrup sponge pudding with custard. Golden syrup sponge pudding. For us in South Africa, we call that malva pudding. Malva pudding. Short and sweet. Pardon the pun. <laughs> but when our appetites are appeased and the plates are cleared away, Luke stands, kisses me goodnight and leaves me to stare at my half-empty cup. Lonely in the lull of night, I sit in a house too big and too empty, foreign and unwelcoming. Even with its warm tone and homely decor, it feels cold. There's no need for tears, however. I know I can get through this like every other obstacle I've faced before. This is a minor setback in what I hope will be a long and happy life. Your happy life is with Zachary. You must get back in it. To remind myself that this place is for Luke and for our future children fills me with a renewed vigor. Besides, it looks like someone is having a cry already. The wailing is far away and muffled. I can hear it, man. Yet at the same time, it shakes me to my very core as I hear it. As if the suffering is just standing right beside me. Hearing it sends a chill down my spine and makes my skin prickle with goosebumps. Who is that? Oh god. Are we going to find it now? Is, is it crying? Curiosity sinks in as I follow the sorrowful sound into the kitchen and into the wine cellar hatch. Hello? Is anybody down there? Just like her dream. 
I'm curious and concerned, but there's no way I'm going down into a dark and humid underground. I'm not as enthusiastic as Luke, who, dis who considers himself quite the connoisseur. However, I also cannot bring myself to go to bed with this racket going on. If it is one of the household help, they will surely need some talking. After all, this wouldn't be the first time I've gone and found one of the maids sobbing their eyes out over one thing or another. As professional as our staff are, they are still human. More often than not, it was either your Hans or I who'd calm them down, who'd help them figure out how to go on about things. Unfortunately, I'm not in high spirits right now, so I'm not as wholly benevolent. Open the hatch. Call them out. Call them out. I knock three times. Waiting for any sort of reply yields me no results. And I've already touched the floor hatch far too many times than what I'd like. I take a deep breath before reaching out again to whoever's inside. I've learned from experience that people respond better to kindness than threats. Shouting angrily would not help in coxing You, out. in the cellar, do come out. We don't want Luke waking up and finding you in there, do we? That man would go ballistic thinking someone was trying to steal his precious wine. Still nothing. You can have a good cry. Just not in there, yes? Why don't you come out here and we can have a cuppa and you can tell me all about whatever it is you're bawling about. With how long I'm standing here, however, I'm starting to think myself as a fool. I did not want to acknowledge the other feeling I have, especially as the wailing took an airy turn. The thought of being played with didn't sit too well with me, and I had to stop myself from getting too hot-headed as I try one more now, time. Now you come out of there! That is an order from the lady of the house, do you hear me? Why I ought to... I freeze as a hand clamps down on my shoulder. Oh god. The dread I've been feeling all this time makes itself known as I kneel unmoving, not even daring to breathe. I can feel my heart pounding against my chest, but the touch is gone as quickly as it had seized me. Oh god, Jesus, Johannes. It is only Johannes I see when I look back. Apologies, madam, for touching you like that. You were not responding to my voice, and you looked about ready to wake the whole mansion up. I was... Oh, I'm sorry. I was getting rather loud, wasn't I? But that crying woman in there, we must do something about her. He grows silent for a moment and just looks concerned. At least I'd like to interpret it as concern, given how stoic, stoic our head butler usually is. Or rather, it must have been concern as he takes off a glove and presses the back of the hand at my forehead before his worrisome inquiry. I beg your pardon, what crying woman? Is it just her? Are you feeling well, madam? Oh my word, it's one of those... Miss Bella, can't you hear her? Madam, Hannah, no one is down there. What? The cellar is locked. Only Luke and I have duplicates of the keys. Nobody is down there. I stare at him in disbelief. But when I listen once more, I hear no crying. Tugging at the hatch for good measure prove his words to be true, too. The thing won't budge unless I had a key, short of using power tools on it. Perhaps it is time for you to go to bed, madam. You are simply tired and hearing things, a perfectly normal human experience. But if you are still experiencing auditory hallucinations in the morning, you are free to consult with me. Okay. Are you a doctor? There is a cold feeling in the pit of my stomach as he helps me up to my feet. What he says makes sense, and who am I to question someone who used to be a doctor? Okay, that makes sense. I'm just tired, that's it. <clears throat> Long day of moving, the interview, dealing with Luke. That has all drained me of any proper sense. Yes, I, I suppose you're right. I just need some sleep, that's all. Of course I'm right. Go on, then. Gute Nacht. Good night, Johannes. German man. Good night, house. <sighs> Imagine if I tried opening the door. Would it open? Would it open? I don't know. 
I would, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it would have. All right, you guys, I think I'm gonna leave the video there. If you enjoyed watching it, just hit that like button and subscribe. You wanna stay in tune with more videos. I'm really liking how the story is going. I really, Isabella's story was good because she's the one who found the letter. So it was very suspenseful and scary. It was just all in one, you know, like, like the, the, the fear was concentrated like all at once but with Hannah I feel like the story is just progressing so well and that she's slowly being haunted literally the ghost has latched herself onto her and it's just slowly haunting her when she's alone which I think is really good I love the progression I love her character actually I didn't in the beginning because I thought she was a stuck up bitch but now I see what she really is and she's a kind nice person just She's got a bitchy facade on the background. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, have an awesome day or night in the gaming world. Cheers.